air embolism causes and symptoms an air embolism or more accurately a gas embolism occurs when one or more gas bubbles enter a vein or artery this can block the passage of blood and it can be life threatening depending on where the blockage occurs symptoms and severity vary air embolism is one of the leading causes of death in the diving community air embolism can be caused by a number of factors most commonly diving but certain medical procedures can also cause gas bubbles in the blood the exact prevalence of air embolisms is not known more minor cases may go untreated and can be without symptoms this video will look at the causes and symptoms of air embolism what is an air embolism an embolism in general refers to anything untoward that has become trapped within the vascular system an air embolism specially is a bubble or bubbles of gas trapped within the blood vessels the bubbles will at some point cut off the blood supply to a particular area of the body air embolism can easily cause significant and permanent damage to the central nervous system and as such must be treated as an emergency a venous embolism embolism is not as serious as an arterial embolism which is itself not as serious as a cerebral embolism however all the above have the potential to cause severe damage to organs and systems if left unchecked some medical procedures can cause small amounts of air to enter the venous system via an intravenous drip for instance in general these are stopped at the lungs and do little or no harm in rare cases they can reach the heart and disrupt its workings arterial gas embolisms are much more serious the embolism might potentially prevent oxygenated blood from reaching the target organ and cause ischemia an inadequate blood supply to an organ if the heart is affected it can produce a heart attack if an arterial gas embolism reaches the brain it is referred to as a cerebral embolism and can cause a stroke an injection of 2 to 3 ml of air into the cerebral circulation can be fatal just 0.5 to 1 ml of air in the pulmonary vein can cause a cardiac arrest causes as mentioned some medical procedures can allow small amounts of air to enter the body this can be serious but it happens rarely the vast majority of air embolism cases involving diving in fact air embolism is the most common cause of death among divers there are two ways in which an air embolism can form in response to a dive both occur during the ascent but via two different processes decompression sickness also known as the bends an embolism can occur when a diver surfaces too rapidly as a diver descends their body along with the gas they are breathing oxygen and nitrogen is under increasing pressure the diver constantly uses the oxygen but the nitrogen pools in the divers tissues if the diver returns to the surface too swiftly the nitrogen is not given the chance to be reabsorbed into the blood and will leave the tissue as bubbles of gas a good analogy to help understand this process involves a bottle of carbonated soda when the bottle is sealed the carbon dioxide cannot be seen because it is under pressure however if the pressure is quickly released by opening the cap the carbon dioxide forms into readily visible bubbles if the cap is slowly released in stages the bubbles will not form pulmonary barotrauma if a diver holds their breath 
during a rapid ascent trauma can be caused to the lining of the lungs as the pressure decreases during the ascent the volume of the air in the lungs increases if the breath is held voluntarily the small air sacs of the lungs alveoli can rupture this tears can allow gas to pass into the blood other causes of air embolism can be iatrogenic caused by a medical intervention this can include intravenous drip most commonly via disconnected central venous catheterization hemodialysis treatment for kidney failure laparoscopic insufflations otherwise known as keyhole surgery air is sometimes pumped into the space between the organs and the skin to clear a passage for the surgeon to work open heart surgery lung biopsy removal of a section of lung for examination radiologic procedures especially where the injection of dye is necessary childbirth particularly cesarean section endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreatography or ERCP a procedure designed to examine the pancreatic and bile ducts ERCP involves injecting a dye into the region via an endoscope no accurate figures are known for the prevalence of air embolisms due to surgical procedures some estimate that vascular air embolism occurs in anything from 10 to 80 percent of neurosurgeries and 57 percent of orthopedic surgeries for air to move from the atmosphere to the blood system the pressure gradient has to be such such that air entering the site is favored in general the pressure in blood vessels is greater than the surrounding atmospheric pressure therefore a normal wound will not allow for gas gas to enter however in the head or neck region the pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure injuries at these sites can cause air embolisms for this reason operations on the head and neck are more likely to cause iatro iatrogenic air embolisms symptoms signs and symptoms of air embolism can include the following pain in the joints joints or muscles irregular heart rhythms blurring of vision anxiety itchy skin seizures bloody frothing from the mouth low blood pressure and dizziness difficulty catching breath chest pain vertigo extreme fatigue tremors loss of coordination visual or auditory hallucinations nausea or vomiting cyanosis faint blue coloration of the skin paralysis or weakness of the extremities or one or more limbs loss of consciousness if a scuba diver is seen to develop these symptoms within 10 to 20 minutes of a dive they should lie horizontally receive 100 percent oxygen and be taken to a hospital preferably one with a recompression chamber prevention diving is the most common cause for air embolisms the following list can help prevent their occurrence limit the duration and depth of dives always surface slowly and use safety stops to allow gases to be safely and naturally reabsorbed never dive with a cold or a cough show extra caution if diving in particularly cold water avoid alcohol consumption before and after diving no vigorous activity before during or after a dive remain on the surface for adequate time between dives keep hydrated before diving live at least 24 hours before going to a higher altitude example mountain climbing climbing or a flight